Hey, I'm TJ Schwanke, and welcome to Outdoor Quest TV. On today's episode, Vanessa's in South Africa, and she's shooting the Sacco Bavarian chambered in 375 H&H, and the 375 H&H is one of those cartridges that kind of gets caught in that no man's land right between big bore and medium bore. Most hunters know it as a very effective, dangerous game cartridge, but what a lot don't realize is what a great planes game cartridge it is as well. You know, when we top it with something like this two and a half to 10 Zeiss Victory HT, it's more than capable at 300 yards. And the real game changer for the 375 H&H has been these lightweight mono metal bullets like this GMX from Hornady. Now offered in their Outfitter line of ammunition, the GMX is a super tough bullet that absolutely loves speed. You know, with more traditional cup and core bullets, we have to go to heavier weights to achieve maximum penetration just because those bullets shed weight as they pass through the animal. The great thing about monometals like the GMX is they have virtually 100% weight retention, so we can get away with a lighter weight bullet and still get that great penetration. The only really limiting factor with a bullet like the GMX is ensuring you have impact velocities of 2,000 feet per second or more. And with the 375 H&H, that puts you out at about 400 yards. Where the GMX really shines, however, is up close. You know, I have to laugh at tales on the internet of these mono metals going so fast that they just penciled right through an animal. That's ridiculous. If you know anything about physics, you'll know that the higher the impact velocity, the more violent and rapid the expansion is going to be. The only time you'll ever have problems with expansion on a monometal like the GMX is if you let that impact velocity drop below 2,000 feet per second. Other times you'll have people point at the exit hole, and sometimes monometals do leave smaller exit holes, and that's just because they go through as a single projectile, and they don't fragment like other bullets do and blow a big hole out the other side. When you think about it, a two times expanded 375 bullet really isn't any bigger than your index finger. So the size of that exit hole really has nothing to do with what happened inside that animal. You know, this Outfitter ammo and the GMX have been a real game changer for the 375 H&H on planes game. And they're more than adequate for dangerous game as well. Well, let's join Vanessa in South Africa on an eland hunt. Hey, welcome to Outdoor Quest TV. I'm Vanessa Harrop, and we're on the Eastern Cape of South Africa, and I'm hunting with Ray Kemp and Tia Douglas of La Lapa Safaris. So, yesterday I was eland hunting, and of course, gun swap, camera swap. Next thing we know, TJ's hunting kudu. So, I'm back at it again, hunting eland. It's first thing, sunrise is just coming up, and I've already spotted eland. Um, cows, so we're gonna keep keep glassing and that's the game with Eland is you just glass and glass and glass and once you find something then you plan the stock. They're really spooky, really wary, they have an incredible sight, great fun in the Eastern Cape of South Africa. Oh, there's a nice little herd of Gemsbuck. So we're actually hunting cattle ranches um, and sheep ranches. Uh, this isn't even high fenced. It's just like hunting in North America where we get to, you know, hunt people's farms and stuff like that. So really awesome. The farmers will actually let you know if they've seen game. And so every animal you see here is all free ranging. And it's pretty spectacular. Uh, you can glass and there's Gemsbach there. There's Eland there. I can hear a baboon barking in the distance. There's mountain reed buck just over there and it's all free ranging. Incredible hunt is quite mountainous and you better be in shape to hit this place, that's for sure. We gave up on that spot we were glassing this morning, um, just so windy and, and uh, we couldn't see anything. So we decided to move on and come to a different spot and um, just decided to glass this area and stopped and lo and behold, we've seen an eland bull. He's way in the distance. So out comes the spotting scope and now we're checking him out. For us, the kill does not define the hunt. For us, the hunt is about the journey. Join us on our journey.
Outdoor Quest TV is brought to you by Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Sacco and Tika firearms demand perfection. Zeiss, we make it visible. Loa boots, simply more. Silver Willow Taxidermy, see the difference. Closed captioning provided by Deluxe Wall Tents, made in Canada for Canadian conditions. What do you think, Ray? He's got a big body on him. Yeah. Um, but he's miles off. Um, I probably need a closer look at him. Yeah, I think I need to get and, a little closer. Yeah, a little closer. And <laughs> yeah, wouldn't love it in there with a 375. No. <laughs> but uh, he's got potential. It's yes. protected against the wind. And he's just going to hang there. He'll probably lie down there and we'll pick him up this afternoon okay. again. If you know, he'll start feeding at 3 o'clock again. So we'll always get another look at him. Right. So the plan is to go up yeah. here and then glass the into the valley into the valley where it's nice so. and sheltered and hopefully pick something up a bit closer yeah because to get to get there we're gonna have to go right round. ah okay so basically uh, the game plan with eland is glass glass yeah. and more glass correct yeah and just uh well, be patient just the same as any other more early morning late evening mm -hmm. um but yeah they are feeding at 10 11 o'clock in the morning right and you're saying because this cold wind that's coming in, we're getting a little bit of a cold front, they may stay yep. out and feed longer. That's right, yeah, they need the energy, so they will feed for longer. Mm -hmm. So a bit of excitement. Um, we were just, you left us last time, we were glassing that other area and um, get a call from Edward, the other PH, and um, he spotted four really nice bulls and it was actually right where we got our kudu last time. So. We're going to head in there real quiet and see what we see. They could, two of them could be the same eland we saw yesterday, but um, we're hoping they're not. We're hoping that they're all new and um, get a nice big old bull down on the ground this afternoon. So we'll see what happens. So we just glassed in just a little bit. Can't see them anywhere, so we're gonna have to go in a little deeper and a little closer. So um, hopefully they're in there. I looked where they were yesterday. They're not there. I don't know. So we know there's four bulls in here. Right now we've spotted one. And it's amazing with an eland that's that size that they can actually be so hidden that you can't even see the other three. And we know they're there. Um, the one that we can see has shorter horns than the ones that we saw yesterday. He's got a big black dewlap. Um, can't really make out a whole lot more than that. He's looking a little nervous, so I think he's pretty much spotted us. but. Uh, now it's just a case of a waiting game. Um, maybe they'll come out later on. We'll get to see all three, all four of them there. So sit, wait, glass. That's the name of the game. So what do you think? So there's, there's four bulls there yeah. and I think the two are from that we saw yesterday right. and the one still remains a shoeable bull that we saw. Mm -hmm. And you but think he's the biggest? Right? I think he's the biggest yeah. of that lot and then there's another bull of a similar age, slightly tighter horns, slightly thicker, um, not quite as big in the body. Yeah. So the bull we saw yesterday is still the biggest and still shootable but I think we can probably still find better, okay. so we'll leave them for now. Well, we know where they live, right? Yeah, they seem to be staying here, so we can always come back for him. Okay. 
I think there's an Edward City saw a bigger bull this morning. Right. So hopefully, it's, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack, <laughs> but you know, you never know. And it's only day number two. Exactly. So we can exactly. have a go at that bull, and then we always got these as backup. Yep. Check this other one out. I mean, that's the yeah. problem is when you hear about another one, you have to go and see oh, it. I know, exactly. <laughs> and he says, it's all. and when a, when a pH says it's a probable, then you know it's a probable. Yeah. So we have to look <laughs> the probable first. Okay, well, let's uh, head back to the truck and start a game. Good. <laughs> Outdoor Quest TV is brought to you by Defense Aerosols, Bear Spray, for when your life depends on it. Safari Club International Canada, first for hunters. Alberta Outdoorsman Magazine. Midland Radios, communication for every adventure. So after we left those four Eland bulls, we actually came all the way around, went back to the lodge and came up through the property here and we're on another plateau. Uh, so where we came from was way over, way over there. And now we're looking back that way into the flats. Um, Edward actually saw another bull earlier and um, he sort of gave us a rough idea where he saw him last. So now we're just spending the, the game glassing and looking and um, I have a feeling just a little bit of excitement here that we may see him again, so. Yeah, I see him. You see him? Yeah. Now there's one further left of that and he's looking straight, feeding straight towards us and he's a big bull. Yes. We can uh, get that bull. Okay. We'll see him here today and we'll think we'll put him to sleep here and we'll, tomorrow he won't be here. I can tell you now he won't be here. Right. He'll, you'll find, I mean, you'll find another place to go. So we kind of want to get there to him. Somehow. So I guess we better make a pretty quick move then, hey? I think so. I'm, I'm convinced of it. You know, I, I saw his, I saw the brush. Mm -hmm. I saw his front quarter. And I'm convinced that's a big bull. Well, if anything, we can get down there. At least we can have a closer look. Yeah, here he comes after. Here he comes. Okay, so they finally came out and we were all the way up there. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk in and hopefully we get the wind correct for us, come around there out feeding. So we've got about an hour left of daylight. So yeah, that's the golden path. So <laughs> it's hopefully, um, yeah. So we're gonna go to the right, get the wind, walk right into the wind and uh, we'll see what we can do. Let's not waste any time. Let's yeah. get the show on the road.
This segment is brought to you by Stony Creek Hunting Gear. It's in the blood. For more information on hunting on the Eastern Cape of South Africa with Lalapa Safaris, check them out online at lalapasafaris.co.za or contact their Canadian representatives, Vantage Point Hunting at vantagepointhunting.com. Did. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I saw him go boom. What a shot. <laughs> we didn't know where he was and it was just thick, thick bush here. And um, I kept saying, let's get in the opening, but he's like, no, no. And we're just bending down and like peeking in and all of a sudden I saw a bum and, and he saw it and it was just, oh, oh, that was an adrenaline rush, that's for sure. Oh, it's been a long day. <laughs> it's been a long day. Well, Ray, that was one exciting and long stalk well, today. Yeah, it was, well, one of the best I've ever had on Elon. That was just, and it's my favorite animal and yep. we had a great stalk. We went round. But the wind right and we could hear the clicking of the eland's hooves yeah that's how close they were to us and we got in that's the way hunting should be so well uh, and this is the amazing thing about free range you know free range hunting is like i mean he was way the heck over there yeah. and and i mean you just never know what you're going to run into no you don't so and we've been hunting this ground for the second so we haven't we haven't seen a decent bull and yeah. and and suddenly they one pops out yeah it is amazing and that was but that like when he was in that thick stuff and you could hear the clicking the click, yeah. of the hooves and um and but we just couldn't see him gets the heart pump <laughs> it certainly did <laughs> it certainly was a blast you know you guys have got to come and experience a hunt with ray kemp at la lapa safaris well ray and tia have gone to get the truck and basically figure out how to get in here. We already crossed a fence and there's no roads here. So they're figuring that out. And then the next job is to figure out how to get that beast into that truck. So now I was shooting the Sacco Bavarian in 375 H&H and uh, topped with the Zeiss Victory HT in two and a half by 10. And I'm shooting the 250 grain Hornady GMX. Man, did that ever perform. Did you see the way that guy dropped? <laughs> Holy. Well, you can hear the chainsaw going. It's going to be interesting to get that truck in here. <laughs> and darkness is closing fast. Now, the interesting thing is to see whether this is going to actually fit in there. But what you'll see is that we haven't knocked the guts out or anything. They actually take these whole back to the shop and they will process the entire eland. And for anybody who doesn't know, eland is probably the best meat you will ever have. So you saw yesterday Vanessa killed a great eland and eland is without question the best eating meat in South Africa but we're doing something a little different today. We've got some eland here, eland testicles. So we're making um, a little appetizer for everyone out there and we'll see how it goes over. So just had these soaking in milk overnight. It's got some oil heating here so I'm just going to bread these up. Just gonna put some onions in the oil. Get that good little flavor. Just gonna wash my hands and we'll be back. All right, we got our oil nice and hot. We got, uh, we need, so when you do the testicles, what you have to do is obviously take them off the animal, but there's a, a membrane around them. So you skin them right out and you actually get a beautiful uh, meat from them. I know some of you probably have a hard time believing that, but. So we just did those in a flour dredge with um, just kind of whatever spices you got on hand. We put a little bit of hot peppers in there, and some thyme and some sweet basil. We're just gonna fry those up till they're nice and crispy. Well, we've got them all um, nice and fried up here, nice and brown and crispy. So we're just gonna pull them out, put them on a little paper towel. And uh, 
It's always interesting with testicles. Everybody is so terrified to try them. And then when they do, they think it's one of the best things they've ever eaten. Little fried eel and testicles right here. Oh. Looks what like calamari, man. What are we going to dip them in? <laughs> just eat, then enjoy. Shotgun. Hurry up. Oh, they're really hot. You can't just have that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they were. Mm. Okay. Let me try on that. Okay. Whoa. There's nothing wrong with that. Isn't that good? Mmm. <laughs> Tastes like nuts. <laughs> That's good, man. Well, I would say they were a success. Next time you shoot an eland, make sure you take the testicles out of it. Outdoor Quest TV is also brought to you by these fine sponsors.